Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm carrying on with experimenting different exotic combos. I've gone with a combo that is basic on paper, but perfect for those who enjoy triggering chain reactions. Combining both stasis and void together is not quite an easy task, but with season 23 mods available, we're able to combine the two to create an even more volatile setup that has the destructiveness of void and shatter effect of stasis. Using this will not only grant you an unhealthy level of explosion to use, but you also get your health regen back, overshields, suppression effects, slow and freeze effects, and they're easy to customize setup if you don't like the gear being used. It's crazy, but it just might work, so let's give it a try. Starting with aspects, you'll want to have Bastion where placing a barricade down or using your super grants overshields. Then you want controlled demolition where hitting a target with void abilities or volatile explosion make them volatile. Further damage to volatile targets causes them to explode and grant health to you and allies. Similar to how I did a 7th and close of void setup, we'll make sure all of our void abilities can turn targets volatile upon touch and straight after death. This here will be the paving stone towards making our glaciers even more chaotic and destructive upon action. A fragments used are Echo Persistent where Overshields, Invis and Devour Durations are increased, Echo Explosion where Void Ability Thunder Blows cause targets to explode, Echo Provision where damaging targets with grenades grants melee energy, and Echo Starvation where picking up a Void Breach or Orb of Power grants Devour. Within the given section, there isn't much fragments you need to select to enhance the build further, since the key thing we need actually comes from the controlled demolis aspect. However, it doesn't mean we can't just pick up and choose what we like here though. Ideally, Explosion, Provision and Starvation are the go-to fragments players should generally be picking because of their all rather nature when applied to the given build. Devourer will allow us to survive for longer and grant grenade energy as we play, which is huge when using these suppressive grenades. Explosion is just going to enhance our explosive kills even more, and then Provision will allow us to use our midi to kickstart a chain reaction when needed. Persistent is the only one where you can freely remove if you don't care about a duration increase for overshields and devour based effects. For mods and stats, the main stats to invest in will be resilience and discipline. We will be using strength as well, but just not as much compared to the other two key stats. Resilience at tier 10 will grant us a 30% damage reduction. Reaching a tier 10 is recommended for a 30% damage reduction and faster barricade regen time frame which for us will grant us an overshield for me and my allies. Now, barricade don't matter here so much, but having the rally barricade will provide both the defense and fast reload that the build will most likely require for end game. I would also recommend adding the harmonic resistance mod for a 15% void damage reduction, which will be useful against certain enemy types. For discipline, we have ours at tier 10 for a 1 minute 1 second cooldown via suppression grenades. Although Magnetic or generally any other grenade might be better here, the Suppressor Grenades will offer more bang for your buck by applying Suppression Debuff that will stun targets and volatile hits via our aspect. Such a combo will make them prime for triggering our effects more better, and using Armentarium for two grenades will allow us to feel our ability usage one after another. Now since this stat is quite high, we will need further aid from the following. Grenade Kickstart for a 34.4% to 45% grenade regen on times 4 armor charges to times 5. Impact induction for a 12% gain. Innovation for a 10% gain. Bomber for a 12% gain. And Devourer for its base gain. All of these ones in action should be enough to allow our suppressor grenades to function much faster than its current rate. Uh, lastly, MIDI will be at a tier 4 for a 1 minute 23 second cooldown. It will be used for activating or triggering volatile targets quickly, so its usage is limited but not by too much. Having the Momentum Transfer mod and our Echo Provision Fragments should be enough to support the stat without even needed further sacrifices. The next section covers the additional mods and armor charges we use. For armor charges, we are charged up times 1 for increasing the amount of armor charges we can hold, while having stacks and stacks to increase armor charges collective from 1 to 2 instead. Then we have Stasis Siphon, Powerful Attraction, and Reaper to not only create orbs of power, but also make it easier for us to collect them. Then lastly, we have the Heavy Ammo Finder, Stasis Scavenger, and Stasis Reserve mods designed for allowing us to use a Heavy more often. 
Now, for weapons, we have the Virgil's Curve Exotic Bow. The given bow was chosen as part of the anti-champion setup and this unique feature of creating glaciers on demand. I needed a weapon that can produce glaciers on the fly, but also being combined with Pillar of Ice Seasonal Mods effect. This has proven to be a really good combo when combined together, as it will allow us to create glaciers after glaciers, depending on how many kills we net in the process. A further combining this with volatile base effects will allow glaciers to turn into a sort of stasis landmine with devastating effects. As an alternative, the Wicked Implement is a good secondary option if you want something a bit more easier to navigate around and doesn't require a lot to the user. For Heavy, we have the Dimensional Hypertroid Grenade Launcher with Chain Reaction and Field Prep. This is a weapon that quite honestly I've not heard many people even talk about since Lightfall released. And even then, it was kept kind of behind the line with most of the content. It's the first heavy waveframe to be added to the game, and even though we have a primary and secondary waveframes that offer more versatility, the heavy frames are hitting a lot more harder with thanks to a recent buff. They do serious damage now, and even though my perks are more for ad clearing, it still gets the job done when against mini bosses to bosses. Honestly, you'll be surprised how good they are now. So experimenting with different elemental combos for Season 23, the given build expands on the chaotic nature that Void Volatile Explosions already provides and now dialing it up to 100 with stasis installed. It's rare to see combos like this play out since there aren't many ways of implementing a loadout that's both practical in action, fun to play with and viable in all types of situations. Luckily, since Season 23 still has quite a bit of time to go, we have room to try out new things. This combo makes full use of the Void subclass of Stasis Seasonal Mods for an interesting chain reaction build. I designed the build so that when I freeze, slow or create glacier near a target, I can shatter them via my Void abilities and enhance both of these explosive damage even more. The build doesn't require a lot to achieve since the Seasonal Mods come by free. The Void subclass by free and the Stasis weapons used are flexible if you don't have what I have. For example, using the Virgo Curve bow is perfect for the build since I can create glaciers quite easily via the kills made. From there, combining the Pillar of Ice and Hell of the Storms mod will not only allow me to create even more glaciers than the base weapon can be used, but also increase their damage by a 28% damage buff, all from shattering a single stage glacier on hand. This will also work out well when combined with my Heavy Grenade Launcher, which is both a waveframe and also has Chain Reaction. So imagine this weapon taking out a wave of frozen enemies, which will spawn more glaciers upon enemies' death. It doesn't even stop there, since when you apply Void Volatile abilities to the mix, we can use our suppressor grenades to stun targets and make them volatile. So if a champion is marked by a volatile hit and frozen, or hit by our glaciers, then they're going to be a huge chunk of health taken out of them, just from their secondary effects kicking in. This alone makes the build wonderful to use if you enjoy ad clearing builds, but also want something for inflicting high damage to a single enemy in a unique fashion. It kind of reminds me of using Severn's Enclosure, but instead of using my media lot, we use our base abilities and status effects a lot instead. However, there is one caveat with the build, and that's how our bow will only produce glaciers upon kills made. From the exotic trait down to the seasonal mod, you need to get killed with the weapon to produce the following items. This is fine when against minor enemies, but against champions for example, you need to plan out your attacks before you choose to activate your key abilities against the given target. If all else fails, you can always use your subclass abilities and weapons to quickly dispose of your given targets, but it's just a good reminder as to why the build is both good and bad at. Overall, a odd change of pace for Void Titan build this season, it's unique to the point of offering something new to try out, but not too unique to where it becomes convoluted and confusing to players. Let me hear your thoughts on the build, so I can create some more in the future. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared, then please leave a comment below. While at the same time, if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and a sub while here. I will leave a dim link for the build below. If you want more stuff like this, then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.